everybody and welcome to today's video. I have another video on Bravely Default 2 to share with you today because one was just not enough and I wanted to look at one specific element within the game that I think is really particularly admirable about it and something that I have found really engaging throughout my entire playtime. I felt that this was worth doing a separate video about because it is for me the thing that is most worth getting excited about when you sit down to play these yourself and that is the various interactions between the characters that you get to enjoy as you play. So in addition to the major plot beats, cutscenes and so on, every so often as you are playing the game a little icon is going to pop up on the screen to say that it is party chat time. Now this is a familiar system to anybody who has played a Tales game from Bandai Namco of course, they really pioneered this system and it was also part of the previous Bravely Default titles as well on the 3DS. But if you haven't played any of those, you are going to quickly come to love what these party chats are and look forward to that little icon popping up on the screen as you play along. In those party chats, little profile boxes of the characters pop up for short, minute or too long discussions. Sometimes those chats are contextual to what is going on in the main plot, but in a lot of cases, they're just there exclusively to get us to care about the characters by having them banter with another, one another in a very naturalistic way. And those are the chats that provide much of the humor and character personality that you'll find in Bravely Default 2. So you may remember from the previous video, I said there was a lot of pop, uh, personality in this game. That comes from these party chats more than the kind of explicit cutscenes that you have from the main plot. Now the thing about these party chats is they are not essential to the narrative of the game. You can, in theory, ignore them entirely without compromising your understanding of the rest of the game. And after a while, the little icon that is on the screen that says party chat will also disappear if you choose to ignore it. Don't worry if you just didn't notice it as you were playing, it is actually easy to miss and that happened to me a couple of times you can access the stories that you've missed from the lore menu afterwards. They don't go away, so if you did mean to watch them and you didn't while the game was playing, you can always catch up later on. I can't imagine people actually overlooking these things deliberately though, as the banter between the characters is charming and quite droll, and without them, the quests within Bravely Default 2 can get a little too heavy in tone for what the game actually wants to be pitched as. So each of these chats is often over nice and quickly. As you've seen from this video, they're really not that long. They're really just vignettes that capture a moment of bonding between the characters and sometimes give you hints to their deeper selves. So it's not a time commitment to experience these chats and there's no real consequence for doing so. So you are going to just pay attention to them anyway. I think most people will not skip past them. They also tend to occur after key moments and so they're not random in design, they don't pop up at random moments, they're there in a very deliberate way. Uh, so for example, they'll come after a major cutscene, so the characters have a chance to discuss what just happened within the kind of context of their private group. At other times, you'll reach a dungeon to the first time and the characters will have a conversation about the observations that they have of that dungeon to add some character to the space that you're just about to explore. None of these conversations feel forced and often the topic at the start of the conversation will spin off into some random joke or whatever by the end of it. 
much like how conversations be friend, between friends in the real world actually work. In fact, I think it's that naturalistic flow in the conversations that I find most appealing about these party chats. Because Bravely Default is so heavily focused on doing this retro-themed, inspired by Final Fantasy thing with the main plot, the earnestness of the way that it engages with concepts like crystals and caricature like bosses from retro era RPGs and that kind of thing can come across as a little bit of a trite pastiche by itself. And if that was all it was offering, then I think that the appeal for Bravely Default 2 would be much less. Thankfully, these little bits of human, deeply human, banter and chatter help to warm the overall narrative and when you're playing through Bravely Default 2 and falling in love with the characters, these chats are where it comes from and they help to also lighten the mood and really kind of expand on the emotional connection that you have to the main plot and in doing so they actually really elevate the nostalgia factor as well. The other thing I really love about this party chat system is that none of it is strictly necessary for the progress of Bravely Default 2 as a game. I find with a lot of video games these days that efficiency is pretty critical to the way that they're designed. It's more the case perhaps with Western games, but I also see it with Japanese games. And whether they're long, short or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Even with the longer games, there's never a scene, conversation, level or area that's not there specifically to drive the main thrust of the experience forwards. This manifests itself in a couple of superficial ways and a really good example of that perhaps uh, to just highlight what I'm talking about is perhaps you may remember from older JRPGs that every time you went to a new town you, it would be full of characters that you could talk to. Every single character on the map was interactable in some way even if they only had one or two things to say and those one or two things didn't actually push the narrative forward in any way. These days with modern games, the majority of the characters on the screen you can't actually interact with and you can only speak to characters that are specifically there to drive the main plot forwards. This idea also manifests itself in more significant ways in the way that games are designed too. So there's a dedicated scene to make you care about a character, for example, it's kind of a, a character building scene and then there's a key scene with some drama, and then there's an action scene, and so on and so forth. Modern games are streamlined to the nth degree, and there's no downturn, uh, sorry, no downtime for the sake of downtime. There's no moments within the game where you are just not pushing forwards towards the kind of end objective of what it's, the game is about. The thing is, I remember reading this way back with the second edition of Dungeons & Dragons when I was a kid, and it really stuck with me as a principle of good game design, and that is that it's okay to have the proverbial empty room. In Dungeons & Dragons case, they were talking about the actual dungeon rooms, but it can apply to pretty much anything to do with design. Not everything needs to have a monster or trap in it. Not every room needs to have some kind of encounter there. Sometimes these empty spaces as such are opportunities to relax, to stop you from getting too de desensitized when you do open a door and find some monster there to fight. The downtime allows the impact of the uptime as such to be greater. Bravely Default 2's little party chat conversations work like that downtime for me. They're not as a result, the game is not strictly efficient in that it has all these moments in the game that are not specifically there to drive the player towards a specific outcome, reward or progress. What they do is 
breathe some life into the game and make you care about the characters and the environment and the setting and so on. And that's really so much more important and gives this game an X factor that helps to elevate it over so many other titles that you might have played that is streamlined to the point of being quite shallow as a result. Anyhow, I don't have too much else to say at this stage about the party chat system. I will have more to talk about once the review goes live, of course, but I have to wait to embargo lifts later on and closer to release before I can do that. I hope the video has given you an idea of what to expect from these little side conversations because they really are the most delightful part of the game and everything that you've seen in here is just from the first couple of hours of play. There is so much fun stuff that you're just going to have to wait to experience for yourself. Let me know if you're looking forward to Bravely Default. I know it's a game that quite a few people are looking forward to. It's a big one for Square Enix and Nintendo earlier, early on in the year. I certainly can't wait to publish the full review of it. In the meantime, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you like what we're doing here. That way you'll get to catch them all. And if you would like to support us at DDNet, please consider dropping us a dollar a month or so on Patreon. That support goes straight back into further building up what we're doing with this channel and so you will get more videos and they'll get bigger and better and whatever else we can possibly manage to keep you entertained and informed about what's going on with the niche side of video games. Anyway, thanks as always for tuning in and watching and once again hopefully this was interesting and we can chat about it in the comments and we will see you at the next one.